Hey, greetings, and welcome to Code Quickie. And today we're going to be looking at the application data folder. So once again, most importantly, please reach out to me in the comments um, as you're doing this tutorial, as you're doing this lab, reach out to me in the comments. I'm happy to reach out. And also, any advice you want to give me, also give to me as you both work on getting GCP certified together. So without further ado, let's just go into the overview of what the application data folder is and a quick overview, try to make this as quick as possible. Application data folder is for your Google apps. When you're using them with Google Drive, right? You can place things like your config.json and YAML files in there so that it can help the app form at and function as needed, right? And this is something that the end users don't have access to. There's probably important data, important data in there. There's probably credentials in there, right? So it's a great place to put some credentials just in case a user can get there. The only thing is that they can see how large it is and they can actually delete it. So anything in there, you want to go ahead and make sure you're able to put back just in case if your app finds it missing. So instead of getting errors, right? you won't have to worry about it. So let us get into it. So let us get into it. So first thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and download the web app. We want to go to GitHub, download, you want to pull it, you want to download it either way. Right? You want to go ahead and download the web app. And next thing you want to do in the root folder, as you can see, I'm in the project root. You want to run the surf command with this, as you see here. Yeah, I want to run this little command in the terminal, right? And Angular, and before I continue, just want to go ahead and just give out a shout out to Angular one more time. Angular is the framework, is the web framework to use. It's a web framework of now. It's a web framework of the future. It is great, many features, and look how fast it, it built and load and loaded the application, right? Just to build and load the application, right? That was very quick and just to get it open and running and ready to go. Even though this is a tiny application in Angular 11, it is blazing fast, right? So with that, with that said, let us go ahead and head back to the lab. What you wanna go ahead and do is, first thing you wanna do, you wanna go ahead and set up credentials and give us access to our credentials by using this code. Right, great. And now what we want to do is you want to go ahead and create those credentials like so. So we want to head over to consoledevelopers.google.com. Want to click on our credentials tab like so, and you want to create credentials. Right, you go ahead and create an API key, copy it, and then you want to restrict key to the drive because there's a lot of powerful and expensive APIs out here. You, you don't want hackers to try and come in and then they're actually using your API key and you're paying for it. So you want to make sure you restrict it to the drive. You want to head over to your environment folder, API key, paste the API key here as provided in the lab application. After that, you want to go ahead and create a, a WAF client ID. Application type is web app and the JavaScript URI and the URI, you want to copy localhost. Obviously, if you're doing this in production, replace that with the domain you're using and so on, right? After so, we go ahead and click create. And then for this, we will just need the client ID. You won't be working with the secret, okay? So after like so, our application is ready to go. And now, once we have access to our credentials, what we want to do is go ahead and get the library loaded and give ourselves actual access to the platform through the browser SDK, USB API, and so on. Right, so when you set up the application for the first time, it's going to say the app isn't verified. This is your app, right? So we want to go to do, you want to click advance and you want to click on go to quick start. And then every time if you're doing these labs, if you're doing one or more of my labs, always you want to create, give yourself a new API key, a new client ID, because the scopes that, and I don't think I harp on this enough, because the scopes that you're dealing with here, right, in the scopes, right, if you take a look, look closely, drive metadata, right, what you have in your scopes is that these change, right, and you, when you log in at first time for the app, 
this only gets asked one time. So in order to create a new app, right, you need a new API key, new client ID, it will ask you for those scopes. And then what you accept, right, because this is going through the UI to the end user, which is you who also has control of the app as well, right, then Google can go ahead and now access the application data folder, right? Just think about it, right? You accept the permissions to save your email address, but then all I need to do is change the scopes and now I can do much more. No, right? So you need to create a new API key and a new client ID every time you try a different lab in my series, right? So now I'm gonna go ahead and click allow. All right, and now we are ready to go. So first thing you want to go ahead and do is now we want to, before we actually head in and start messing around with the API, we want to head into the UEI and just see how we can look at what's going on. So say if you have an application, right, say if you have it on your phone or say you don't have enough space in your drive and want to see what's going on, you can head over to settings and you can head over to manage apps and you want to take a look at quit start. So that hidden app data right there, right? That's less than one kilobyte, right? That's very good. It's probably a byte or so, right? That is where that application data is for the application data folder. What you can do is you can dis disconnect the Apple Drive or delete that application data folder. So if you want to delete it from the UI, this is an easy, quick way to do it. But we are coders, so let us get going back into actual code. Right, so what you want to go ahead and do is you want to create a file. Let's just say you want to create a sample file in the application data folder. What you want to do, you want to head to our environment and you want to set it up so that we can go ahead and create. So create will be true. Head back to our directive and this is the code right here. Very simple, very straightforward to go ahead and create a file. Right, we're going to make a post request to the to the files endpoint to Google's GCP files endpoint, right? And in the body, right, we're gonna provide an array, just one length, right? It could be more because files actually have more than one parent in Google Drive, very interesting. App data folder, like so. Oh, that's interesting, I got an error. Let me see what's going on here. Request had, look at my scopes here. That's just interesting. Hold on. All right, resume. All right, so yeah, I kind of figured out the issue. It actually, took me a while, but yeah, it was actually the scopes. I, if you could see here, right, what happened was I said metadata before, right? I clearly have to um, edit that. I really, really important to have to edit that, or else we're gonna have a difficult time with the lab. It is actually supposed to be drive dot data, which is going to allow you to work with the application data folder, not metadata. Right, I apologize about that. And I'll be able to make sure I update that in the tutorial, which I'll post in the description below. All right, so as you can see here, all right, we have an island created in the app data folder, right? You know, I should have put some data in there to see, hey, say, hey, stuff is here, right? But config.json, right? Go ahead and refresh the page. Right, look at manage apps and look at quick start, right? And then there is our app data once again. So now that is how we go about working with the application data folder. Make sure your scopes are correct. I also you the wrong scopes, but hopefully, luckily, the error was not much worse than that. So next after that, we want to go ahead and do is you want to say you want to list all the files in the application data folder, right? So we want to do we're going to take this object. I don't like the formatting, but that's okay. We're going to take this object, right? We want to head and do we head to the environment folder, replace like so, and then we are going to copy and paste in here instead. Right, we wanna be able to look at all the files in the application data folder. Right, look at the copy, and so they're editing and clean up the half 
to do what I thought I did, but that is okay. All right, so now we get to see all the full files in the application data folder and so on. So there's really not too much to it when it comes to creating um, when it comes to creating files, when it comes to moving folders around, sharing the permissions, and dealing with the metadata, and so on, the same apply. It's no different with the application data folder as with as well as other regular files. The only thing just to remember, we want to create right. You want to specify in the in the post request in the request body that it's parents. It's in a sequential in your application in. TypeScript, what we have is arrays, JavaScript arrays, Python, we have lists, Ruby arrays, and so on. And um, when you want to list right, all the files in that app data folder, right, as a create param, you want to use spaces um, and then a comma separated values as a lot. Right, so that is our tutorial on the application data folder. Thank you for watching. Please like share and subscribe and always as important i'll leave a link to the tutorial to the tutorial lab in the video description and always make sure to reach out to me in the comments always look to help out i love to come and help out me in this journey together for google cloud platform thank you for watching